This is Becca Monahan from the Office of Academic Success, and today we're going to be talking about burnout and stress and how we manage them. As we talk about burnout and stress management, it's important to acknowledge what burnout is. Burnout is a state of emotional, physical, or mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. So burnout usually is gradual. It's overwhelming and uh, constantly emotionally draining, usually leaving you unable to meet the demands of your everyday life. Understanding what burnout is is important because if not managed, it tends to spill over into other parts of your life. So primarily as a student, you might experience burnout as you're struggling with your classes or maybe exams. Long-term burnout can have negative health impacts. It can keep you from sleeping, but it also leaves you susceptible to illness and fatigue, making it hard to do anything outside of your work or school or home life. Now that we know what burnout is and why it's important, now we're going to talk about the causes of burnout. So you might be looking at lifestyle burnout or work in school. So with your lifestyle, it could be just a multitude of things such as working too much, not giving yourself enough time to socialize or to relax, lack of support through your relationships in your life. Big one is not getting enough sleep or eating if you're not taking care of yourself that can really quickly lead to burnout. For your work in school, it could be feeling little or no control. Maybe it's exam time and you had no control over all of your exams being at the same time. Um, Lack of recognition, unclear expectations, over demanding work, and high pressure environment. All of these things are really important to understand that can cause burnout because it can help you eliminate the areas in your life that it's happening and hopefully help mitigate some of that stress that you're under. With this presentation focusing both on burnout and stress, it's important to recognize the difference between them. So you can recognize burnout because it takes a lot of different shapes and forms depending on the area of life that you're in and what your circumstances might look like at the time. So recognizing burnout could be academic, professional, or personal. The three most prevalent signs of burnout we see are lack of energy, negative feelings, and poor performance. So watching out for these warning signs is really important because it can help you recognize it and hopefully stop it before it gets too late. I keep mentioning stopping burnout out before it's too late. But before we get to that point, it's really important to look out for signs of how to prevent burnout. Burnout, a lot like depression or stress, have some of the same overlapping tips for preventing it. Some of the big ones are exercising, positive self-talk, to-do lists, setting goals, talking to someone you trust. These things I really enjoy because they apply to all areas of your life, whether you're getting burnt out from school or you're getting burnt out from your job. These are things that can all be really helpful just for lifelong wellness. Now is when you could take a couple minutes to just maybe look down what your tips are for burnout and see if any of those ones are something that you do in your life that you find to be helpful and just reflect on that. When we're talking about recovering from burnout, it's really broken down into five steps. Step number one, don't ignore it. Just by tuning into this video today, you're acknowledging that you might be experiencing some burnout, whether it's from school or work or your family life, understanding that you might be getting burnt out from the responsibilities you have and not ignoring it. Step number two, focusing on yourself and your health. This one's really important, just acknowledging that there is something going on uh, and then focusing on what you need to do personally to fix some of those things. So focusing on maybe I need to walk more at work instead of sitting at my desk all the time. Maybe you had a stressful meeting and you need to get out and go eat lunch somewhere else. I know that's something I fall victim to a lot. Step number three, reevaluate your goals and values. This one's really important because if it's school related or work related, for a student, it might be reevaluating, is this the right major for me? Are these the right classes? And just remembering why you're in school in the first place is really important. Step number four, taking a break. This one shows a picture of somebody hiking. That's not something I enjoy, so it isn't something I would do. But understanding what a break looks like for you, maybe it's time with friends and family. Maybe it's cooking a home meal for yourself. Understanding what a break is for you and taking the time to do that. And step number five, looking into making a change. Again, this one can be a difficult one because it sounds easy on paper, but the reality is burnout, if left unhandled, has negative health effects, and it's important to understand what changes you can make to help limit some of those things. Maybe it's stepping back from some of your involvement. Maybe it's taking less classes. Understanding what changes you can make in your life to help prevent some of these burnouts. Looking at these examples of these different steps, what are some things that you might do in your own life? This next slide has a link for a guided meditation. If that's something you're interested in, please click the link below. It's a quick, simple guided meditation, about three minutes long, but it just teaches you about healthy breathing and just gives you a moment to pause and reflect. The first part of this presentation focused on burnout management. Now we're going to focus on stress. So stress, what is it? I really like this quote, stress should be a powerful driving force, not an obstacle, by Ben Phillips. I really like this quote because I think sometimes we tend to think of stress as something that shuts us down, but the reality is there are times that stress is healthy and it wakes us up. For example, as an athlete, you might feel stress going into a big competition. You might feel stress going into an exam. These are important things because it helps indicate that, you know, you might care more. It's important to feel stress sometimes, but when stress is prolonged, that's when we see it turning into burnouts. Being able to manage your stress is important and also recognize 
recognizing if it's healthy or unhealthy, and we're going to talk about that now. In my time here at CSE, I've been in a lot of different roles. I was a student myself, an athlete, an RA, a GA for student activities, and now I work in my current role as a retention specialist here for the school. But in my time here as a student and now as a professional, I've noticed that these are the biggest stressors for college students. So academically, lots of pressure to do well, balancing your school and your life, deciding on a major or a career, those are some pretty big stressors for students. Relational might be homesickness. Something we see a lot of is family stress, especially for our online students that aren't here. It can be a lot of stress trying to balance your family and your school and personal. This could really apply to anybody, but that fear of disappointing others increased responsibilities as you take on harder classes, as you move forward in your major, maybe you've moved forward in your job. Lack of good time management, something we see a lot in our office of students not being able to manage their time, balancing their school, their work, and their home lives. And then financial stress is also a big stressor for our college students. Acknowledging that those are some of the different stresses you might face as a student is really important because then we have to look at how you cope with that stress. There is no getting around stress. As you balance your life, whether it's as a student or after you graduate, it's important to understand that stress is something that is ongoing. But you don't have to be scared of stress because you can cope with it. So there's different ways of coping that are both healthy and unhealthy. And like I mentioned before, some of these do overlap with other things. Healthy coping might look like exercise, eating healthy, engaging in a new hobby, things that get you excited that take your mind off some of that stress. Seeking support, professional help is a big thing, even just relying on others in your life. But then you have unhealthy coping, which might be something like drug or alcohol use, procrastination, self-harm, changing in your sleep pattern. Maybe that's sleeping too much or not enough. And then same with food. Maybe it's eating too much. Maybe it's not eating enough. You might realize sometimes that when you are stressed, you tend to go back on some of those unhealthy things. But it's important to recognize that and move forward and understand that there's other ways to cope that might be better for you. We've talked about burnout and we've talked about stress, but how do they compare to each other? Some characteristics of burnout might be your emotions are limited. You have a lack of motivation and hope. You're detached and disengaged in your life. And the emotional impact is generally greater. When we're talking about stress, on the other hand, your emotions might be overreactive. You lash out at people in your life life. You tend to freak out a little bit more. Your loss of energy, that physical impact is going to be a lot greater. You might experience high blood pressure. You might experience anxiety, things like that. That's where we see that lack of sleep being a big thing. And then this is usually caused by an over-engagement in things. You feel stressed when you have lots of tests going on all at the same time. The important thing to notice with stress is when it's acute versus chronic. Chronic is long-term, usually three months or more, versus acute might be situational. Understanding that difference is really important because it allows you to know how to move forward. For example, you might realize you're really stressed about a test, is it one test or all of your tests? Because if you find yourself getting stressed about all of your tests, that's a different issue that could be test anxiety. That could be a chronic issue versus acute being stressed about one exam. Burnout and stress are both things that you are going to experience in your life, and you probably have already. The most important thing to remember is while you are going to experience both of these things at some point or another, neither one of them has to control your life unless you let them. As a CSC student, we have resources available to you both as an on-campus and an online student. Some of those resources might include the Office of Academic success. We have academic success coordinator meetings with either myself or Chantel Merchant. This just kind of helps offer you some tools and resources to encourage your time management and coping skills for time-related stress with your academics. We also have tutoring. Those can be scheduled with an appointment ahead of time, and those can be online or via phone call. And then we have our Back on Track Peer Mentors. This is a great program for anyone who just needs some accountability in their life. If you're interested in that, please email us at our M-O-N-A-H-A-N at csc.edu or look up tutoring on the website. Another resources we're really proud of is our CSC Counseling and Health Services. We do have these located up on the third floor of Kreitz Hall for our on-campus students and we have three full-time counselors as well as our counselor down in the library for our Strive students. If you're interested in making an appointment with them, please scan the QR code and that'll take you to that website where you can book an appointment with them or you can call and schedule an appointment with their office assistant at 308- 432-623. Thank you for listening to this presentation on burnout and stress management. If you're interested in any of our other videos, please look through our page and see the different ones available to you. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. Thank you.